the Reading Leader Crunch, nestled at the top of Spook Lane, has had many claims of unexplained activity over the years. Kippa Crew was invited to conduct an investigation to try and answer some of the many questions to why activity continues on the property. To assist in answering these questions, we invited psychic medium Erin Swavely and her brother, psychic Matthew Swavely, to be part of this investigation. Prior to this, Aaron and Matthew conducted a walkthrough of every room inside the club and also outside on the property. They took notes during the walkthrough and then when they finished, they left without discussing any of their findings with anyone. We then conducted our investigation. In February 2014, we arranged a meeting with Fritz, Linda, and Harold to discuss Aaron and Kippa Crew's findings. Here is that night. We, uh, we sat with Erin last month, uh, like I said earlier, we went over everything, and she started up here, what I have written down, um, she felt high energy on the steps uh, leading up to here. It's energy is very male. A lot of energy arguing. is what? Very male. 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 A lot of arguing and loud male voices, family feuding, two specific families in particular, one male trying to take all responsibility for the grief that he caused his family. Felt that in the 70s area was redone. Do you know anything about in the 1970s? Or no, we were only era? up here. No, in, we were in, up here. In, well, uh, they, only, they only came up here in 88, 89. 89. 89. 89. Yeah. 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 That would be the Eagle Mountain. Do you have any, any uh, knowledge of any fire or anything up here ever? Any what? A fire. fire. Any kind of smoke damage or fire? No, not as long ago. No. But before. But before. It, it hasn't all before. No. When um, when I talked to the other people, they said that uh, one guy said, well, Aaron had mentioned that in a lot of arguing male, and he said that back in the, at, I don't know what time of era, but the mob at Reading used to come up here and count their money up here. And they gamble and stuff. There was a lot of it, so that would be a, yeah, a lot of arguing. Yeah, a lot of gambling. Yeah. And plus when it was, FOE, Eagle Mountain Home, you know, I don't know if they came up here then and discussed anything or it was more of the mob and stuff up there counting money and you know, playing Well, I know Reading like had mob and they also had prostitution up here too. Not up here, but I mean in the city of Reading, a lot of prostitution. And I think that was probably affiliated with the mob too. And she felt um, a female presence up here? Um, a long dress, an apron, with a hair pulled back in the bun. Lenny Weekle and Joe Farnell. That's it, Lenny Weekle. Lenny Weckle. Weckle. Oh, sorry. That's who I talked to. That's who he spoke to. And when she said that it was a woman with a hair pulled back in the bun, Jen, the bar trustee, she said that when she was up here, she saw some, she heard somebody turned around and she saw a woman standing there and she vanished. And so that same time, Tammy texted her what her hair looked like she got back to us and said it was pulled back in the bottom. So that's exactly what Aaron had said. And this would have been in the 70s, did you say? No, this was a long time ago. Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, this was more uh, based on what I felt and like the uh, way she was dressed. It felt like, I don't know, maybe like 1940s, I want to say. So it was a while ago. And that and it, Jen said that that's what she saw, and of course Jen and Aaron right, never Aaron, spoke. We didn't speak or anything. Because I called, I texted Jen, and I said, you know, I went down and talked to her. Then she was at the bar. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, that lady. And she's like, yeah, she had her hair pulled up. I saw. I remember of like a white whitish dress on her, <coughs> long, a long white dress on, mm -hmm. like they would wear back in that time period. Mm -hmm. with their hair well, pulled up. Aren't there some? pictures in the back in the hallway and wasn't there a woman something with a long white dress on we must go down and look i'd love to see that i remember yeah. now and lenny said also that um she, she he said it basically was word for word what aaron had said that there's a man that felt uh sad that he had spent so much time up here and not with his family and Lenny actually said that, I mean, when I talked to him, almost word for word, 
and he said at one time I guess somebody lived up here you know decades ago I and took so. care of the place when it was the evil mountain yeah, yeah. I think they had and a custodian. he said the one guy that stayed here always felt bad and sorrow because he spent more time here than his family that's exactly what she said almost word for word mm -hmm. and she came up with the name Ronald up here right mm -hmm. Ronald yeah Ronald. Ronald. I can look some of the names up. That yeah, that would have been from Eagle Mountain. Know, I had written some names down. Now these were, uh, they're members of a club, about four of them. They remember it because as a kid they were up here. They, they belonged to, their parents belonged to the Eagle Mountain Hall. And they were actually up here in, uh, in the 40s. Huh. But I couldn't find that paper and look them up. But it's interesting, they did tell me some stuff that went on, especially with the gambling. This just might have nothing to do with it. But over there along the, along the driveway of Stoke State, there are steps. Wide, it's eight foot long steps that go down. And that's where the people got off. Mm -hmm. the, the, gravity, right. the gravity railroad right. Right. got off to come up here to go dancing and eating. This used to be a fancy oh, yeah. place up here. And to my knowledge, <coughs> this is the front of our club. But I believe the back was, was the entrance. Was just, the entrance was this side, the side, right. which I I just found that out. Because if you right. look at this, I think. They told me that that was the front of the club, which was on that side, on, that side, yeah. on the back side, what we don't they, use. They, they came up here in <coughs> long dresses, tuxedos, dinner jackets, the yeah. whole nine yards. Oh yeah, the, the inside, the pictures, that I have to get on my bike, I get these pictures up. Yes, was, you do. It was all uh, Victorian. Oh, wow. Fancy lace on the table, mm -hmm. on the window. And I almost think I'm in the room. That's all right. That's fine. I think I, I think I covered everything you covered up here. I don't know if there's anything yeah, else. Um, I think that's it. Now, if you didn't feel any or get any bad. No. Up here? No. Mm -hmm. No. She went, she went down to the bar area and she feels there's two female spirits down there. One middle aged wearing a dress with her hair in the bun against the ceiling that's up here. You said that the one? Yes. She floats from here to there. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's her travel route. Yeah. Yeah. This staircase was really, felt really high in her energy and then all the way down to the bar area. Kind of, she kind of fizzled out towards the kitchen. The kitchen was completely different energy. Um, she's been here a very long time, which yeah. goes with what we said earlier for upstairs here. Name possibly starts with the letter N, mm -hmm. so we're not sure. Feels innocence, sad, feelings of innocence, sad, loss of husband slash lover. Um, she's very particular where everything goes, so she likes glasses a certain way, likes things a certain way in a certain area, so if something's moved. It could very well be her. Um, we say that she mostly moves from the bar area to where the staircase is. That's her. And also an older woman with a big personality that likes to hang out in that bar area. Big in that same age uh, era. Now she would be older. Uh, she's an older woman. Now, did you have an era for her? It felt recent. Yeah, her energy feels more recent. Um, she's not exactly attached to the place, more like the people inside of the place. Uh, let's see, kitchen. Yeah. So I, feel, she, I feel more recent. I'd say last five to ten years. So she's got a big personality. She's attached to a lot of the people in the oh, building. Well, that could be Jean, Jean Siosi. Now, with you in the kitchen, mm -hmm. I don't have kitchen stuff here. Because you really didn't feel much from what we understand from our notes. No, uh, the only thing that I did get was an H name. I wrote down possibly Helen. In the kitchen. H? In the kitchen. There's yes. a Hildy. Okay. There's a Hildy. I 
Hildy isn't a name that would come to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> but um, I, I said H name, possibly Helen. It's definitely an H name, felt feminine. Big personality, big. Mm -hmm. I know. That was very strong in the kitchen. We, you guys look at this with what Jeff has here. You can see it. Um, Brenda took photos throughout the night, and this photo that I'm going to show you is exactly six seconds apart. And if you look at this, may I get closer? Yeah. Oh, you definitely. If you look at the doorway, it looks like a face. Somebody's looking out the doorway. I have no idea. I see something. Yes. I took other angles. I came here at different times. And even that night, there's different angles, and there's nothing there. Other than that. Yeah, like, really? Yeah, 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 oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That had no idea what I was looking at. That was caught. I was like. Do you see anything? Yeah, excuse sure. me, here's the other one. Like, six seconds. Well, that's six seconds like difference. It feels like it's. And um. Well, energy she feels down there. I had that in the kitchen at work. Yeah. And the one guy, like literally, I could watch the color. Uh, like, and I could look. And the hair stand. He's like, I feel sick. How can you? I said, what is? And you know what? I can see Gene Then you'll see. You look at that. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It almost looks like Gene C.O.C. You're right. Mark the goal to St. Anne de Beaupre, one of the churches up there, that uh, St. Anne was a, a, a saint of healing. And she would bring keys that were blessed. And she would give these keys out. That's really neat. <coughs> we all have Go ahead. So in the kitchen was what Aaron said, just that big, big personality presence, presence, female, H name. She was. So both of them. You know, if you're thinking, you know, Hildy, then it very well may be that. Hildy is Robin's mother. Yes. Yes. And she was had a big personality. She was our cook down the old Rita Price, came up here in '89 uh, and died in. She's the one who died on Thanksgiving Day after serving 250 people. Went back in the kitchen, how do we do? Came out and said, how do we do? Went back and dropped over dead on uh, Thanksgiving Day. That was Hilby. So then... That was in 90... 90 yeah, I think I have that written down somewhere. Okay. Now this is in the kitchen. This is in the kitchen. This, this I had... Um, camera set up, a night vision camera, and a microphone by itself. And before this happened, a few, maybe 30 seconds or so before, you'll, you'll hear what this is. There's like a tap on the microphone. There's nobody in there whatsoever. It was like, I don't know, 2, 2.30 in the morning. It's right before no, it's we before. finished up. Talking to like Jen and everybody here, the big concern is the basement. You don't like the basement. Nobody likes the basement. Mm -hmm. Jeff doesn't like the basement. The bartender. The bar too. Hmm? The bar area. Yeah. So with the basement, when Erin went down there, and we met with her. She said that she got these feelings of scary, dark imprisonment, secret society, hazing by like a frat type, like a frat house hazing, uh -huh. slavery, whipping. Um, doesn't seem very welcome. A lot of intense, heavy energy at the middle wall. Yeah. 
This wasn't felt throughout the whole basement, though. It was just a certain part. Yeah, it was. It's right near the washer part. Yes. Okay. So when I'm standing here, there's that doorway right there, and you can see the washer and dryer. It's the wall that's like right at that doorway. It. it kind of separates the two. It kind of like separates the room. There's a room actually behind it. You mean there's a room behind there? Yeah, it's, they cemented it shut, but I, you know. How far did you go back with your feelings? How many years? This this seemed uh, it seemed like a while ago as well. I don't know. You know, there's there's so much energy down there, and it's so heavy. It felt really overwhelming, so it was hard, and there was a lot of stuff coming in, so it was hard to focus. Um, the I guess the most intense energy was right there at that wall and then we went back a little bit further and there was a cedar door I think it was a cedar door and to the right and then to the left it seemed like there was another doorway that the steel whole keg area yes the steel door at the keg area right there we go that whole area back there there was a lot of really intense energy back there too so uh, see that's where Jennifer doesn't well, she's and, back there for and right. nobody now you said that um the washer dryer you felt like you wanted to scream yeah from intense <laughs> abdominal pain it was yeah there i it kept getting really intense like stomach cramping abdominal pain um that's why i don't go down to the wash yeah well it was right in that area yeah yeah mm -hmm. um well yeah you, if you're afraid you're gonna get cramped <laughs> I don't get any friends. We take the wash home. Yeah. We, we do the tablecloths at home. And then. She felt that it was very feminine um, down there. Yeah, well, that in energy that one area. in particular, especially where the abdominal pain came from, that felt feminine right there. The rest of it was pretty intensely male, though, um, okay. especially near the wall and near the, the door where that keg area was. You were, re you were sensing um, religious symbols, cross altars. Mm -hmm. Uh, fire damage around 1928. <coughs> fire damage. Um, felt that it has been reconstructed at least four times. 1828. 19, no, 1928. 1928. And what did you say? Um, been reconstructed at least four times in that area, the whole basement. Redone. Now you're saying. That would make sense what you just said. With yeah. a wall being blocked, and now, you know, you guys rebuilt stuff. Yeah, and, but see that whole kitchen was rebuilt yep. after we came up. So that wasn't with the Eagle Mountain. Um, I did some research and I found out that in 1889, a man named Morris Weil, or Weil, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, he owned a business, a retail business in Reading. And when he went to retire in the late 1890s, he started buying properties. And one of the properties was right here. And he was part of the FOE of, of a Reading, yeah. um, number 66. And him and four or five other guys, three or four other guys, got together and made Eagle Mountain home. And with Eagle Mountain home, back in those days, they had rituals, everything she described. They would have all male, they'd be in the basement, or in a room in here. They would have their secret rituals, and they would use a cross, have an altar. Everything she said is exactly what I read. What Bring that back again. What do you have there? An altar, a cross, what? a cross, a cross. A religious symbols. Oh, um. What kind of symbols? Kind of like if you ever watch the Masons, when the Masons do their induction of, of members, it's very religious. Oops, my husband's. Yep, you have two of us here. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's like you know you have those religious. Oh yeah, they, yeah. They, backgrounds. They, they definitely had. Uh, Masons up there. But then and that's what that's when he found out with the Eagle Mountain. Yeah, that, that's what it was. Why, why did he? That's not a. That's not a regular. But you know, Roger. Roger. No, no, it isn't. But. Well, now. The, the Tony Lodge. That caught me on board a little. The, the Tony Lodge has members that belong up there. But Elaine's father was a Mason at Tony Lodge, and he was up here. Was amazing. I mean, it was a 
you know, why would they, they, know, but why I, would they conduct meetings up there? Yeah, that I don't know. It's not a constituted law. Oh no, I'm not saying. I'm saying it's like the Masons. I'm not saying the Masons were up here doing it. No, it's, like, it's like. You know, it's like right. when. It, well, now, what do the elves do? I don't know anything about you know, the elves. The FOE they have yeah. their own separate ceremonies. That, that the yeah. FOE back in those days, yeah. um, yeah. I was told would hold like a secret thing, like, have ceremonies. Um, everything she described is everything I found out. And back in those times, uh, they still do it now, but back in those times, would have uh, secret rituals. <clears throat> yes, yeah, that could be the young set. So, if you look in the hallway down there, you can see some of the uniforms and stuff they wore, mm -hmm. and it was just for men. Yeah, and I'm sure they had it. And I found this thing that showed about um, uh, FOE. It says regular mail only meetings. In gatherings held at designated times in accordance with the bylaws, um, with initiations, social activities, ceremonies, meetings, prayers, and secret rituals. Everything that I found that they did back then here is what she described. Yeah, and do they have anything in the summer? It was a human mom was a family thing, if you want to, but they also had their private meetings. It all matches what she said. So if you're down in the basement, um, Aaron says there's nothing to be afraid of. The energy isn't going anywhere. It's with the foundation. It's with the ground, the building, the foundation. It's not, but there's nothing to be afraid of. Her advice was organize and clean up the clutter. <laughs> And the energy will feel better. Oh, okay. It'll because it, it it'll make it more open, more. It, and that was your advice. Yeah. There's less places for the energy to be stored when it's just an open space. So the less clutter and the better clean, the more clean that it's kept, it'll start to feel a lot better in there. So that any time that there's anything uh, like ritual or something done like that in a space over and over and over again. The energy is so powerful when you're doing any form of ritual that it tends to stay and it'll stick around. Now because whatever this ritual was, was religious but also had a certain dominance feel to it, it ends up feeling, well, dominant. Like, And so it, it can feel scary because it's really, uh, it's like overpowering. But it's nothing to be afraid of. It's not negative. It's not. It's not evil in any certain way. Um, but the cleaner it is, the better it'll start to feel. Yeah, there was a person up in New uh, New England today. A bad person. A lot of bad stuff went on in there. There were three guys in there. No, two guys and a woman. One after one, they could not stay in there. It was so overwhelming. Yeah. The, that they had to, they had to get out of. It. Yeah. Now what are, what does that mean? Did they, you mean they just got overpowered by? It? Mm -hmm. Well, by the, if you think about it in terms of energy, yeah. okay. Um, you're made up of the same energy that whatever energy is being held in there. It's exactly the same thing. So anytime that you are close to that energy, in that energy. You're sharing energy with that. So you are, you're soaking it up like a sponge. You're trading energy with it. So we're, you know, six, five, six feet away from each other. You and I are trading energy right now. It's, it's the exact same thing, even though you can't see it happening. Yeah. That's just. They had to get out of that. They yeah. They could so not stand when, anymore. when something oh. feels so strong, and especially when you're in a place that's Enclosed, that's yeah, small. It's enclosed. Yeah, it's going to feel that much more overpowering to the point where you don't feel like you can control your own energy, which is why then you get scared because it's a feeling of loss of control. So, and that's another reason for like cleaning up the space. It it brings it makes it smaller. It makes the energy more confined. So anytime that it's more open, you're going to it gives the energy more space to move around. It's not going anywhere. I mean, you can do as many things as possible to try and clear it, but it's so built into the foundation because 
anytime ritual is performed, it's such a powerful energy, especially when it comes from like a religious form of ritual. That stuff's really, really powerful. And if it was happening continuously over and over and over again, it yes. just continued they, to build and build and build. They almost couldn't get the air. They had to get out. Yeah, well, and that's when you, when you feel like you lose control of your energy because you're soaking up so much of someone else's or something else's, you feel a loss of control of your body because wow. the energy doesn't, it's not all yours anymore. That loss of control leads to things like fear and panic, which makes you feel like you can't breathe. I guess you're just having a clean-up day. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play <laughs> us. Don't play us. No, no, no. The men. Okay. Um, we were in a bar area. We caught a few things in the bar area, too. Um, it's all just audio. Yeah, there should be a lot in the bar area. I'm not sure exactly what it's saying, so maybe you guys can figure out what it's saying. I'll just play it once and I'll put it on now. Um,
24 hours of the place. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Or one or two things. Now, outside here, and I'm going to hand this over to Aaron, because (laughs) outside, outside's very interesting. Yeah. And she's way better at explaining than me. Like, she has back there that there's a, some kind of energy vortex back by the rocks. And she said it's old world, like a mountain magic type stuff that's actually back there by those rocks. Um, by the playground. It's yeah. old world way back. Yeah, next um, pos- If you have positive energy going into it, it'll multiply coming out, and it'll all be something on this property. And that makes a lot of sense because the way this place is, I mean, it's a nice place, everybody's happy and positive and all the energy going into it, it multiplies coming out. So you put negative energy in, you get negative energy out, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so something will always be on this property. There's things buried out there. There's no reason to dig them up. And there's more than one underground area. There's a, oh, more than one there's underground a area outside. Area. That's what he was bringing up too. Now to say that again, this, um, you, you said that there are things are buried out so there, there, out by yeah. yeah. the rocks. Yeah. You and don't go what? You no. Want, you want she says there's no reason to dig them up. Just leave them there. Well, and there's see. more than one underground yeah. area. Yes. She took a picture of that. More than yeah. one underground yeah. area, yeah. other than the rocks. Where? Yeah. Where's the yeah. other? No, I don't know. It actually feels like there's four all together. Uh, I don't know. I would probably have to go out and walk around. Out of everything, you know, we caught and what Aaron felt and her brother, um, there's nothing in here that's going to harm anybody. There's nothing to be worried about. It's all nothing negative. Nothing Good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Except that basement, it's going to be cleaned up. <laughs> I, you know what I guarantee you, as soon as it's cleaned up, it'll start to feel a lot better down there. Really? Yeah, everyone will. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it'll give the chance, it'll give the energy a chance to just move around. It won't be so confined. Give some positive something in there, storage. Well, rather. Sure they have a lot of energy in there. Well, it'll come out then. Yeah, yeah. I would just try to keep, it, keep the area as open as possible. Just open it up so it has a place to go. Even, I don't know if there's, I think there was a door that was going to outside, maybe just prop a door open oh. here and there. Just, uh, especially, you know, cleaning it out is obviously the best option, but um, anytime you can get fresh air in there, it'll just help to move things around. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's uncomfortable down there, but actually the more people that you do have down there more frequently, that helps as well. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing to work with Aaron and then get stuff we got and then back it up with what she says and then things we couldn't with evidence, you know, doing research. Yeah. And she was around the money. I mean, she got everything exact. And you never, you know, neither of you people knew anything about the club. No. You know, or what happened up here yeah. that it was or... So good. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, this is a great place up here. Yeah. The club... We've been affiliated with Lita Fronts for well, we'll be married 50 years this November. And we were married at the Wood Club. So, of course, we were there and then came up here in 89. And we've been up here ever since. And it's so wonderful. Our grandchildren were up here. Our, our kids, our sons were up here. Um, there's so many people that have been up here. And it's so much happiness up here. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the energy outside, I don't know if you can ex- I explain it right or not, but the way you explained it made a lot of sense when you said about the energy vortex and what that means out How that multiplies in and out and how that corresponds to how the process actually is. So all, all over the world, there's places where there are energy centers, vortexes. I mean, there's a lot of like hot spots. There's a lot of phrases for them where energy in one specific area is a lot stronger. And on this mountain, well, kind of in this area from Mount Penn to most, and over the mountain to most of Reading, there's a lot of these energetic concepts, specifically on the mountain though. And you guys are sitting on one right here. 
this is everything that I felt outside. It was it was really powerful, <coughs> especially near the rocks. It's kind of where it started. So with these energy centers, they're not good. They're not bad. That's, they're not really defined in terms of positive or negative. They're more or less just it's powerful energy. But whatever you put into it, you're going to get out of it, okay? And it's going to be big because it's such a, um, it's almost like this really big vacuum of energy. So it's going to suck in whatever you're putting into it, and you're going to get that out of it. So if you're up here and you're feeling happy and positive and you bring all these great things to the place, and especially to the land, you're going to get all of that stuff back like tenfold. So all the good positive stuff that you put into it, you're going to get lots of good positive stuff out of it. It goes equal with negative. You put a lot of negative stuff into it, you're going to get a lot of negative stuff out of it. So um, anytime... Being on land like this, there's a huge responsibility to kind of take care of that energy. But you really don't have an issue with that because you're continuing to put some good stuff into it. You're going to get good stuff. Well, I, 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 I really think this is interesting. I, I, um, I thank you all for coming up here. I wish you would continue to come up here because I think there's more up here. You know, I mean, we were only here for a short time. Well, yeah. By talking to some older people here and you know the history and experiences and doing the research on my own and, you don't get to eat and finding something. out things here it's just to me it's, just, it's really amazing that the thing we found out yeah here. I just think it's fascinating I uh, hope we answered a lot of you know, questions you, guys you did you did I know um, there was a little apprehension there were the tricks there she won't do it well Robbie and his I I don't anyway. know if they feel that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing, you know, that, that I, I still think she's well, up here. I, I just know that it's up here. Oh, and, yeah, and sure. it's such a positive place, but there are so many good people up here. That's what, that's what when Aaron explained the whole positive energy and how this place is and the property and it made so much sense how this place is. It was like it's a great place.